Hi, it's Thursday afternoon and welcome to Cambridge Folk Festival TV. Now, what a cracking way to kick the festival off. I have with me Mr. Newton Faulkner. Hello there, how you doing, man? I'm very well, yourself? Yeah, very well indeed. Good. And so, uh, how does it feel to be back at the festival this year? Really good. I'm just, I'm still trying to work out how many times I've been here before. <laughs> it's becoming more difficult everywhere I go now. Yeah, okay. And it's our 50th anniversary of the festival. Yeah, that's awesome. And anything sort of special you've got you've got in store for us? Uh, well, this is the first round of festivals I've done for maybe seven or eight years, where it's not just me on my own. And I've got I've got cello, I've got uh, bass guitar, I've got kind of four part harmonies, and it's quite a large step up sonically from what I was doing before. Yeah. Fun. Okay. So you're still going to have some of your sort of. Oh uh, uh, yeah, no, still loads of loads of stuff just me on my own kind of and the multitasking stuff and uh, the yeah percussive guitar stuff all it's all still there it just gives me much further to go so the, yeah, great it's been really the last tour was probably the best tour i've ever done super and where did that tour take you uh, all over the place we did roundhouse in london which was that was really good i love that venue it was really fun and i can't remember where we did in cambridge which i think is there anywhere else sort of special that sticks in your mind from Previous years and touring. Previous years, I don't, all festivals just mixed together into one giant festival. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think your sound sort of suits that festival? Definitely vibe? seems to. Mm -hmm. well, I've had, I've just had endless, really good times at festivals, and mm. the stuff works really well, and people's reaction is always really good. Mm. And, and you sort of get the crowd going with sort of. Yeah, there's plenty to plenty to get involved. Loads of crowd participation and jumping. Mm. And, yeah, mm -hmm. it just it just seems to work. And are you going to throw in some of your sort of signature covers this year? Actually, I'm not. I'm not doing anything too mental. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, How do you? I normally have been. I've been doing a Justin Timberlake cover, but I wasn't sure if I should do that. <laughs> sure. And how do you normally sort of um, think up coming with these covers? Is it you hear the song, or do you sort of play a riff and feel like it might fit well? Or my usual starting point has been: what should you definitely not ever cover? <laughs> Everything else is up for grabs. Yeah. <laughs> and I've done that. Yeah. So I did Teardrop and Bohemian Rhapsody, mm -hmm. which are both two things that you shouldn't really ever cover. Mm -hmm. But I just thought I'd like the challenge of that. Cool. And your sort of percussive guitaring you do, mm. do you find that difficult that when it translates to a record to oh, yeah. get I'm, that over? I think I'm still trying to suss out exactly the best ways of doing that. Because I've done albums with programmed drums, albums with real drums, albums with no drums at all and just the percussive stuff on the guitar. and. I don't know. It's a weird, it's a weird thing because in essence, it's it's kind of a visual style of music, which is, shouldn't make any sense. That should <laughs> definitely be an oxymoron, but it kind of is because it's about the the physicality of the performance itself, mm -hmm. and it's about how much you're doing at the same time and the lengths you're having to go to find kind of notes like the other end of the thing while hitting that, and it's about that kind of process. And unless unless you understand exactly what it is that I'm doing, which I think very few people actually do, especially when it comes to the stuff I'm doing with my feet, it's a whole mm. other layer of complication. Because mm. um, I'm playing proper kick drum patterns now with my left foot while playing bass lines with my right foot, <laughs> while playing guitar in the same way. You're sort of running out of limbs almost, aren't you? Definitely. Yeah. Um, but stuff like that is, it's very much just like a performance energy mm. based thing. Because I had, couple of guys uh, at the beginning of festival season who'd seen me from the front <laughs> sounds really weird but saw me from behind right for the first time one of them just came up and said I had no idea what it was you were doing until mm. today and you are mental why are you <laughs> doing that yeah. and it's weird because it's a huge amount of effort it's really technically mm. challenging it's led to loads of weird like mm back trouble and mm. loads of weird physical stuff because it is like I'm balancing on one leg for two hours a mm. night and no one knows I'm doing it so but also you don't have to deal <laughs> with all the sort of bad bandmates vibe do you really yeah so it's I don't know if that because that's not my sole reason I just like the challenge yeah and I like the kind of level of control as well in, in a lot of ways because I think that's what looping kind of takes away a little bit is once you've laid something down that is it mm. and you're stuck with it mm. and I like the fact that 
I can make as much noise, but I can speed up and slow down and change my mind and mm. make things heavier or make things lighter depending on mm. on the crowd. Mm. And also, yeah, I, I, I'm, I thought I missed the loop mm. boat years ago. Mm. So it keeps it a lot more sort of fresh, a sort of fresh vibe in front of the, the audience. Oh, yeah, so no, because... Change no, it changes every night, really. A little bit, yeah, there's mm. stuff that... And there's stuff... There's sections of songs which I know are almost physically impossible. <laughs> and I know where I'm put. I know which bits are like... But the difference between me getting it right and me getting it wrong in my own eyes mm -hmm. and me getting it right and getting it wrong in the crowd's eyes, there's a massive yeah. gulf yeah. there. Because I'm, I'm aiming for like... Yeah, every kick drum needs to be perfect. Bass notes need to be in exactly the right place. Nothing doesn't make a noise. Or because mm. I'm mixing up the drums as well so I'm, I'm trying to balance the levels mm -hmm. and it's it's ridiculously complicated cool. but really really <laughs> fun and you're going to show us some percussive guitar a little yeah, bit later yeah, on cool talk. um but before that i just want to talk about the way you recorded your last album yeah it was a bit of a big brother moment for you yeah it really was it was crazy um yeah what was it was dubbed as a it was a live music documentary so i had cameras in my house streaming every like all day every day apart from wednesdays um, what did you do on Wednesdays? I spent that with my son, because I didn't want to spend five weeks <laughs> like not seeing my kids. So um, that was that was Dad Day, <laughs> and then the rest of the time I was I was on camera. Whether mm. I was awake or asleep, you could kind of see me. And did you get to a point where it was a bit much for you, or did it? You, s you saw it through. It was the most maddening experience of my entire life because mm -hmm. it wasn't. It was weird. It was when the cameras first came on. I thought like I was just terrified. And I didn't know what I could say, and everything was really weird, and it was really awkward. I haven't watched it back, because I just know how terrible it was. And then as soon as I actually started recording, it was absolutely fine. Because it's one thing being filmed doing nothing, but if you're being filmed doing what you usually do in front of people mm -hmm. anyway, then it kind of all makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it changes the whole nature of the record as well, because it made it, instead of being like you do, you're playing the guitar into a computer, and that's all you're doing. Mm. There's no one listening. It's like, it's it's a take, but only if anyone ever hears it. Mm. Whereas this, every single take was a performance. Mm. Mm. So you're actually trying to play it as well as you possibly can mm. every time because you know full well that mm. there's people sitting at home and people got involved. Mm. Yeah, did you get good feedback well, and, did, and did it change everyone. the record at all? Oh, definitely. Because mm. they were really strict. Because I, I kind of started wanting to put more things on. And they were like, no, yeah. guitar and vocal. It's what we wanted the first time. Yeah, and you it. didn't give it to us. So we're getting it now. Yeah. And, and next time, again, a similar or a, di a totally different experience. Recording. I think totally, totally mm. different. Yeah, totally different process and probably totally different sound as well from the way things are going. Because mm. I, I think there's, I kind of just did that. I did just guitar and voice. And it's what people wanted for a long time, and it, and it worked really well in terms of the fan base. And it's so it's a very personal record as well. So there's it kind of did what it needed needed to do. Mm -hmm. And yeah, now kind of loads of stuff sorted out. I can go, I think I, I need to be loud again. Mm. So I think I'm yeah. You're ready off. for the next one. Yeah. Great. Okay. Thank you very much for Pleasure, talking man. to us, Newton. And you're going to play a, a song for us a little bit yes. later. Yes. Um, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.